Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Katie. Summer is in full swing around here. I actually have a little bit of a sunburn from this past weekend. Wear your SPF people. But today I'm actually going to be creating some outdoor decor for our back deck area. We kind of have a standard setup each year with the furniture and the pillows that we use. It's just the same thing every year but I always like to add a few new decor pieces just to like freshen up the space a little bit and make it feel new. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I'm going to share a couple of decor pieces that I made using my Cricut. This video is sponsored by Cricut. So I'm super excited to be working with them again to give you some inspiration on how you can decorate your outdoor space this summer. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so from the home screen, we're going to start a new project and then I'm gonna go ahead over on the left to images. And I really wanted to make these super summery. So I just thought of like what really reminds me of summer and one of those things is watermelon. So I searched for that in images and I found so many cute options. So I just scrolled through and I found this one that I really liked. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert that right into my project here and then size it down to fit on the little like holder that I'm gonna have for my candle. So I actually knew that I kind of wanted it to be three three quarters of an inch. So I just went up to size and put 0.75 and then I duplicated this a bunch of times so that I have enough to fit on my little candle holder. Now it is time to make it and I don't need to use a mat for this project because I'm using the smart materials which you'll see in a second. And then I can just go ahead and hit continue, choose my material and now we can go ahead and load our vinyl. So this is a smart vinyl that I was talking about. You don't have to use a mat, you can just load it right into the machine so it's super convenient and it takes a lot less time to work on something like this. So I'm gonna have it cut that out and then I decided to add a few more shapes to my candle holders. I wanted to make an assortment. So I went ahead and searched for bikini and I thought this was so cute. You can see here though that it's two layers. So I'm going to drag my cursor over this whole thing and then hit this weld button down on the bottom right and that's gonna make it one cut. You can see here it took away the polka dots. Then I can go ahead and load my materials in and just cut out all of the different shapes that I decided to do. I also decided to do some little tropical leaves as well. I thought that would be really cute. So I picked up these pails at the dollar store and I think they're gonna be perfect for my candles. So I went ahead and weeded my material and this is the tricky part because these are so small. There were some little sections that were kind of hard to get out. So I just used my weeding tool and this took the most amount of time, especially for the watermelon because they had these little tiny circles that needed to be weeded out. So that took a bit of patience, but I finally did get it. And now I'm ready to add them to my little pails. So I cut each one out individually, then cut a small piece of transfer tape and added it to the top of my design. And then I just smoothed it out using my scraper tool. Then I went ahead and peeled off the backing of the transfer tape and added this right onto the little bucket here and then peeled that transfer tape away. And now my design is stuck to the little bucket. So I did each pail with a different design. So one of them I did all leaves and then one of them I did all of the watermelon. And I just wanted to let you know a little tip for pulling the transfer tape away with the vinyl on it is that you might have to hold your vinyl to the transfer tape a little bit using your weeding tool. It just makes it a little bit easier. I found with these really intricate designs, I kind of had to guide the vinyl using my weeding tool um, in order to get it away from the back. And you can see that I'm doing that here. So it just makes it a lot easier with these small designs. Okay, so these are looking incredibly adorable. I'm so excited about them already. Ready. So now it's time to make the candle part. So I've just got some wax that I put in a little double boiler on my burner here. So I've just got water in a pot and then a little measuring cup, a glass measuring cup with my wax flakes inside. And these are soy flakes, but I just keep them in here until they are melted and fully liquid. And then this is the citronella oil I'll be using as the bug repellent. And I just pour that right into the wax. I'm not very good at measuring. So you may want to look up like the proportions, but I'm adding my wick here into the pails and then just pouring the wax right on top. And a little trick I like to do is to take a small wood dowel and lay it over the top of each of these and wrap the wick around it as it's cooling to keep it in the center. So now once these are cool, we've got some adorable summer bug repellent candles. Next up, I want to do something a little bit fun and different. So again, I'm going to create a new project. And then this time I'm going to search for grid because I'm trying to make a tic-tac-toe board. So this one actually looks perfect right here. So I'm gonna add that into my project, but 
it's not exactly the right size. I only want this portion right here. Just want three rows of three squares. So what I'm gonna do is select the shape tool and select a square. And I'm gonna size that down to cover just the portion that I want to keep for my grid. So I'm gonna size it down here and rotate it a little bit and place it right over the portion that I want to keep for my grid. Then once I'm happy with that, I'm going to take my cursor and just drag it over top both the square and the grid. And then I'll go down to the bottom right and hit slice. And this is where the magic happens. You can see that it's sliced everything away so you can drag off those other parts. And now we've got our perfect grid underneath. That is the exact thing that I was hoping for. So I can go ahead and delete these other pieces and now I've got my grid for my tic-tac-toe. Now to resize it, I'm gonna add another circle shape and I'm going to select the size as 3.5 because that is the size of the Cricut coaster blank that I'll be using. Then I can go ahead and drag my grid right over and you might need to arrange it so it's in the front so you can see it and then go ahead and take that arrow and just resize it to fit the coaster as closely as possible as you can. And once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and move that away and delete the circle and now we've got our grid that we can cut out. So I'll go ahead and hit make it and then this time I will be using a mat and I'm going to hit the mirror because you always want to mirror everything that you're making when you're using infusible ink, which is what I'll be doing right now. So we can hit continue and then I'll search for the infusible ink transfer sheets because that's what I'm going to be using and there it is right there. So we can go ahead and hit that and now we're ready to load our materials in. So this is the infusible ink transfer sheets I was talking about and I cut a small portion out that's going to be the perfect size for my grid and just stuck it right onto my mat with the ink side up. And I loaded it into my machine and then it's going to start cutting out my grid shape that we created in Design Space. Once it's finished, I'll just pull the mat away and now I can peel away the excess material. So this was a little bit finicky just because that grid is very delicate. So I ended up having to pull this away piece by piece just so that I didn't pull away the actual grid shape from the backing, but I eventually got it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing with this blue infusible ink transfer sheet. So I'm going to make four coasters, two pink and two blue. So I repeated this two times for each color. So this is the fun part. I'm using my Easy Press 2 mat and I'm gonna put a piece of cardstock down. Then I've got my coaster here. The shiny side is up. I'm gonna turn my grid over face down and put it on the shiny side and try to line it up as best as possible. Once I'm happy with that, I flip it over so it's face down on the piece of paper and my mat. Then I put a clean piece of butcher paper over top which comes with the infusible ink transfer sheets. Then I set my Easy Press 2 over top for 400 degrees, 240 seconds and I let it do its thing. We're gonna go ahead and repeat this whole process for all four of the coasters. So just putting that face down, another piece of butcher paper, and then setting that easy press to right on top and clicking go. So once it is cool enough, we can pull away the infusible ink backing and look at how vibrant that is. This is part of the coaster now, it's waterproof. It will not come off at all. It is one with the coaster. It is so amazing. I love how these colors turned out. And I think these coasters look really awesome on their own, like without being a tic-tac-toe board. That's why I kind of did that. So we are gonna make some little letters though to go with the tic-tac-toe. So I've got these stencils here and I'm just going to cut out X's and O's in a couple different colors. And this part was a little bit tricky for the O. I kind of had to like reshape them a bit because they kept getting stuck, but I tried to use complementary colors. So I just went with the blue and the pink to go with the coasters. And then I baked these according to the package instructions. This is polymer clay. And I think that these are super unique. Like I said, I think the coasters look really cool on their own. It's something that I would just have out, but then you can keep the X's and O's off to the side so if you have people over it's kind of like a fun little activity they can do while they're just hanging out around the deck having a drink having some lemonade or if you have kids it would be super fun too since last summer was kind of a bust i can't wait to actually hang out with family and friends this year on the deck and just relax and use our new decor pieces it's going to be so much fun if you do try any of these out make sure you tag me on instagram i love to see them and if you have any cricket questions feel free to message me on instagram leave them in the comments below i can help you troubleshoot or just kind of answer any questions you might have if you're thinking of purchasing a cricket machine as always i'll leave all the links down below in the description box for everything you'll need for each of these projects thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon.